Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of being a lifeguard slash swim instructor. <laughs> I've been getting a lot of uh, private messages and emails lately from uh, young and up and coming uh, lifeguard instructors that want to develop their career or they want to become one. Instead of just a uh, repeating myself over and over again, I might as well just make a video for you guys so you can watch this over and think about the pros and cons if you want to pursue this kind of career or job. So before we start, I have a theory in terms of YouTube. I think that YouTube is promoting swimming related videos only on this channel of mine. And the way I see it or the way I, I think this way is because I noticed that there's a huge spike whenever I make videos regarding swimming, anything regarding swimming, including this one. And whenever I cover topics that are outside the swimming world, it doesn't get promoted, it doesn't get pushed in front of viewers. So what I'm asking for you guys is to hit that notification bell if you have not, so you get notified every time I upload a video, which is hopefully daily. If you really like what you see, subscribe to this YouTube channel, like this video, and hit that bell. Bing, 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 if you can, all right? It would help me out. Much appreciated. Thank you. Let's continue. Okay, so let's talk about the pros and cons about becoming or being a lifeguard slash swim instructor. Because when you sign up for that job, you have to fill both positions. They need lifeguards and they need swim instructors. So that's why I, I put them both together, okay, if you're wondering. Now let's start off with the pros. Now the pros are, first of all, you are a badass when it comes to someone who can solve problems in an emergency situation. So what most people aren't aware of is that when you're a swim instructor, you're also a first aid attendant. And when you're a lifeguard, you're also a first aid attendant because both lifeguards and swim instructors, we are taught at the very beginning how to handle emergency situations in a public environment. Someone suffering from heat stroke, someone uh, cutting themselves, someone uh, injuring themselves in the water from, from some freak accident, someone drowning, someone lost their baby, uh, someone did this or that. You know, just think of the, all these worst case scenarios that can happen in a pool or in a public environment. They all require first aid attendance and being able to handle yourself in all these kinds of emergency situations. When you are, or when I am out and about in public, there is no emergency situation that I'm not prepared for. So if someone was choking, I would know exactly what to do. If someone was unconscious on the floor, I would know exactly what to do. And I don't even have to think about it. It's just, it's in my mind. My habits just take over. Because when you take like these first aid training courses that are part of your program to becoming a lifeguard swim instructor, they drill it into your head. One and two and three and four and five, one and two. They, they drill in CPR, they drill in like, like emergency protocols. You do these, these role playing activities again and again and again and again and again until you don't even think about it anymore. Amongst all the people out in public, you know, you ask yourself, like, how many people are ready to handle an emergency situation if it were to happen right on the spot? Not a lot. I would say like 99% of the, the population out and about in public aren't ready, you know, if an emergency were to happen right there on the spot. But you, as a lifeguard swim instructor, you know exactly how to handle yourself. Out of the 99%, you're that 1% that's calm and ready to take action and just like boom, boom, problem solve, problem solve, problem solve. If you become a lifeguard swim instructor, you will be faced with a lot of uh, challenges outside of just swimming. So what I'm saying is being a lifeguard also acts as a stepping stone towards something greater, such as becoming, say like a paramedic, if you wanted to pursue that, or becoming a nurse, if you want to become something greater, Working as a lifeguard can be that, that first step. You can handle any emergency situation that life throws at you. Second thing about being a lifeguard swim instructor that I like, a really good pro, is that it gives you amazing 
I, what I say, spidey senses. When you're a lifeguard, you constantly have to monitor your environment, all right? You have to patrol the pool and the outer edges of the pool, the whole vicinity. You have to be on alert at all times. You are the CCTV camera. You are the eyes on the sky. You are the shepherd that has to watch over his flock of sheep at all times. Because if something were to go wrong, or you anticipate something to go wrong, you are the only one there that can prevent it from happening. What I really liked about being a lifeguard is that it really honed in on my skills to paying attention to my surroundings. That, that having that, that sixth sense, you know, like seeing an accident before it can possibly occur to happen. You can see it like unraveling, like, okay, if I don't step in, if I don't intervene, this is going to happen and I don't want to, I don't want it to happen so I can foresee it. It's part psychology, part of it is just basic just observation, like clear observation, right? Attention to detail. You know, it, you become a lifeguard, you really have to hone in on these skills because, you know, if something were to go wrong, you know, amongst like hundreds of people in the water, if you don't spot that one person that's drowning, or you can see that that person will drown eventually. If you don't catch it, you know, it's on you. You know, once you've, you know, really like fine tuned it, like you carry that skill outside of the workplace. So for example, when I'm out in a public area, wherever I go, wherever I travel, I'm constantly scanning my surroundings. It's a good habit actually that I take with me wherever I go because it forces me to pay attention to my surroundings. Like I can spot trouble from a mile away. I study people's faces, the body language. I see the occurrences that are happening around me. This gut feeling that I get when I sense that something's about to go wrong has helped me immensely. <laughs> uh, if you don't want to be like the victim in life, you know, if, if shit were to hit the fan, or if, if, you, if you're one of those people that, you know, you know, you, you react to something, you didn't see it coming. I mean, this is why I encourage you to pursue a career in lifeguarding because lifeguarding teaches you these skills, you know, scanning, monitoring, being safe, observing the environment, studying people. I have a lot of uh, former coworkers, you know, that they've, they've moved on from being a lifeguard to being police officers and they, they take it to the next level. And what's the next level? Being a policeman. What do policemen do? They, they protect the environment, they scan, they monitor the people around them, and they, they look out for trouble. Uh, the third pro that I like about uh, being a lifeguard swim instructor is just uh, teaching. If you like teaching, if you like being part of your community, uh, whether you're teaching little kids to like adults, you know, I really like the teaching aspect when it comes to swimming. I've, I've taught so many people throughout my lifetime as a swim instructor. When you see someone go from scared to, you know, having all these fears and like, you know, kids crying because they don't want to get in the water because, you know, the pain that they associate it with. And you see the, the flip side and you like, they spend time with you, they learn from you and they just, they have pure joy when they show up to your lesson. They want to get in the water and get better because it was you that helped them overcome their fears. It was you that helped them like unlock this, this pain that they had, you know, and this pain, you know, if it's not resolved as a child, later on in life, it grows into a cancer. And the way I know this is because I've had so many clients over the years that were adults that avoided the waters for many, many years because they had a traumatic childhood experience when they were young, their friends pushed them in the deep end. They, they almost drowned. They reach out to me when it's, you know, before it's too late, you know, they, they say, oh, my kids are, are now starting to learn how to swim, but I still have this fear inside me, Justin. I don't know how to teach them how to swim because I can't swim. I'm scared of the water. So sooner or later, the water will catch up to you, no matter how old you are, okay? If you're scared of swimming or you're scared of drowning, you have to face your fears eventually. The time will come. The time will come for us all when we have to face the water, when we're in a situation where we have to be in the water. 
And we have to know what we're doing or else we're going to drown and the water is going to eat us whole. So be prepared is what I'm saying. So finding a good teacher like myself or someone in your local area or online, you can join 7 You can sign up for online swimming lessons and learn from me. Make sure you find a good teacher. And teaching is something that I really liked about the job. I took those teaching skills and I applied them towards ESL. So I went to Korea, I taught ESL for many years, and it was very, a very natural progression. It was very easy transition. It was just a different topic. But you know, my, my explanation skills, presentation skills, my demonstration skills were the same. Were the same. <laughs> and I, I got a kick out of helping people and applying humor and just being friendly and having fun with them. You know, all of this, you know, if you really like teaching, you know, yeah, you can start off as a swim instructor, work with kids, and then it can probably, you know, grow to something bigger, like being a teacher of, like, for example, English or ESL or something else, okay, later down the road. I had a lot of friends that moved on and went and became teachers, you know, later on in life. So there you go. And let's talk about the cons. Let's contrast it because this job is, is not perfect, okay? No job is perfect. So I would be lying to you if everything was perfect, good, okay, great, positive, positive. No, that's not what this channel is about. It's about balance. First of all, it's a physically tolling job, okay? And I'm not saying like construction comparing it to. I'm saying that the, ex the amount of exposure to chemicals on a daily basis for several hours a day can really take a toll on your health. And what I'm talking about is chlorine, okay? You're living, breathing, and swimming in chlorine all day long, right? And it may be minor amounts. You add it up every day, every hour, every shift that you spend at the pool. It's going to take a toll on your health. And it, it really, really <laughs> took a toll on me. And I suffered from really, like, Itch, like really extreme itchiness, dry skin, damaged hair, you know, like stomach, you know, stomach aches because, you know, I ingested too much pool water by accident. It happens to us all. And you constantly have to get in the water and out of the water. So a typical shift at the pool uh, consists of like you lifeguarding for like say an hour and then you, you go into swim instructor mode for the next four hours, like you teach your classes straight. So you're hopping in and out of the water constantly. You are in the water, active, active, active. And then once you get out of the water, you're, you're wet on the deck and you're passive, 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 like te trying to teach, dry land teaching. And for me, it was really hard because I didn't have a lot of body fat on me, to be honest. So every time I was in the water, I was great. I was fine because I was swimming, moving around, teaching, demonstrating for my class. No problem. But once I got out of the water, it was a huge contrast because you, once you're out of the water, like you're just soaking wet. You have a towel wrapped around you that's trying to keep you warm and you're trying to give dry land instruction to your class. And for me, I was just like, I was constantly shivering like, like a cat out of the water, uncontrollably shivering. So I envied my coworkers because they had a lot of body fat on them, but me, I was constantly shivering. And I know what you're saying, like, Justin, you could have uh, worn a wetsuit. You're like, yeah, I was a kid back then. I couldn't afford a, one of those wetsuits. It was so expensive. I really liked uh, showing off my body. So there you go. <laughs> my, my students would call me Terminator. <laughs> Terminator teacher. <laughs> because I was the only muscular uh, swim instructor at the pools. Uh, second con that I didn't like about being a swim instructor lifeguard is that you're dealing with the general public. And when I say general public, you're mostly dealing with bratty kids. Because the bratty kids, they're, 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 they're the most troublesome group. You know, they're the ones that are horse playing, they're causing trouble everywhere you go. And you know, it's just, it's just a, it's a ritual. Because you know, there's public swims in every pool and kids breaking the pool rules all the time. And you constantly have to nag them like, hey, don't run. Hey, don't do that. Like, you constantly have to yell in their ear and they get used to it over time. It's like, just like a nagging mother. Like, they just ignore you. So 
it can be very stressful, like constantly telling people what not to do. You know, stop breaking the rules. And there's very little enforcement. Like there, there's no like three strikes you're out kind of policy in most of these pools. Like if you don't listen to the lifeguard three times, you're out, you're banned. No, the pool sides with the customers always. In these situations, it can be very stressful. Being a lifeguard is a thankless job. Like kids don't really respect you. You're almost seen as like a babysitter. You know, just wearing a red shirt. Yeah, it will get to you over time. It's a grind. Every day you're dealing with problem after problem, right? And when I say problem, I'm saying problems that occur again and again and again. You will always, uh, you know, meet someone who's like running on deck for no reason. And there's, there's signs plastered everywhere. No running on deck because you can slip, you can fall on your back and you can crack the back of your head. But People don't listen. It can drive you nuts over time. Uh, the third thing I didn't like about being a lifeguard swim instructor is that it can be very uh, tedious <laughs> in some aspects. And uh, what I'm saying about tedious is like cleaning the public washrooms and <laughs> change rooms. Nobody told me this before I signed up, but when you become a lifeguard swim instructor, you become a janitor. I mean, you gotta clean the, the, the change rooms constantly. You got to use the hose. You got to pick up all these nasty you know, shit off the floor that people leave when after the end of their swimming. It's very gross. Ugh, very gross. And so much hair I had to pick up using like like paper towel. <laughs> Ugh, disgusting. Pools are very very disgusting like and people vomiting or pooping or peeing in the water you got to deal with that you know you got to put on some gloves you got to dump a whole bunch of chlorine powder into the water or you got to handle chemicals here and there it's, it's not very uh i don't know glorious as i thought it would be like you see in baywatch you know where they're just like constantly monitoring and the thing about monitoring pools i mean i really like you know keeping people safe however it wears on you over time you know, like I said, kids, they don't f listen to you. They don't follow the rules. They break a lot of the rules. You got to constantly nag in their ears. But the thing is, like, the, the heat as well gets to you. And this, this goes back to the chemical exposure. That chlorine, you know, it, it dissipates into air and it goes up to the surface, right? And kids are swimming. People are swimming in the water. So that builds up their body heat. So they're sweating. So that smell, that chem mix of chemicals, hot air, I mean, it fills up your circulatory system and it just makes you slow and tired and weak and fatigued a lot. And you have to be alert, you know, in contrast and observant. So do you see what I'm getting at? Yeah, it's, it's a very tedious job, which is why I say like a lot of people, they become a swim instructor lifeguard for a few years, but then they move on to greater things like becoming a nurse or a police officer or a teacher or they can like work in another field because most of these pools are tied to your municipality your city right so you're working for the city technically so once you're in that system where you're working for the city you can apply for another job because you're in that system so I've seen people they've moved from lifeguard to like human resources for the government for example so think of it that way like I think of lifeguard instructing as like a stepping stone for like you spend a few years doing this and then you can gradually move on to greater things down the road. So not many swim instructors or lifeguards that I've seen have stuck with it for many, many years. I mean, again, the, the, these cons, you, gotta, you have to really consider. Now, if you really want to learn how to swim, I have a special offer for you. It's called 7dayswim.co. It's an online swimming course that thousands of students from around the world have enrolled in. And if you want, you can get instant access by clicking the links down below or visiting 7dayswim.co. And you sign up and I give you the game plan on how to get you from A to Z if you have no experience swimming whatsoever. If, if you're struggling with lessons at your local pool or if you just don't know how to figure things out, yeah, don't. Don't have to, you don't have to be frustrated, okay? Find a solution, and this is a solution. Just get 
a course that will help you step by step and you can save a lot of money, save a lot of time, save a lot of stress, okay? So, once again, that link is called 7 dayswimco You click it, you sign up, and you get instant access. And if you don't have the money, you can join our Facebook group, totally free. You can network with thousands of swimmers from around the world. You can ask questions, or you can post your videos for feedback, totally free. And you can just, yeah, you don't have to be alone on this journey. You can do it as part of a group, as part of a community. So, do it now, and I will see you later.